Hello and welcome to a audio track. That's an audio track and it's called A Healing Touch. My name is Reverend David Peter Nurse. I am an evangelist and a pastor. I represent the Apostolics of the United Kingdom and this is a track which I wrote and now I'm putting it down on audio form so that way you can use this as a Bible study uh, to minister to Bible studies at home or in church groups and uh, you're more than welcome to make copies of this and pass it to other people now at the end of this uh, audio there will be the track in picture form so you can go ahead and use the scriptures or take little bits out of it now the title is a healing touch and uh, it was written a couple of years ago and we've passed out more than a hundred thousand of these tracks and they've been very very successful and uh, I will leave all my details at the end of this video so if you'd like to contact me or inbox me please feel free to do that a healing touch and wheresoever he entered into villages or cities or country they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they might touch if it were by the border of his garment and as many as touched him were made whole that is in the book of Mark chapter 6 verse 56 that's Mark chapter 6 verse 56 and that tells you about the healing power of Jesus Christ Jesus is the same yesterday today and forevermore if you will have faith he has the power to heal you page number two a healing touch life brings its ups and downs and there are times when all else has failed and we just need a healing touch Jesus Christ healed people and is still doing it today he's still healing people today just by his touch and when Jesus came into Peter's house he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever and he touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and ministered unto them that's in the book of Matthew chapter 8 verse 14 and 15 that one touch chased a fever away she arose and was able to work again and that's all we are looking for sometimes just a healing touch you see just one touch from Jesus Christ and faith in him can change your whole life people laugh at this but I say at times what do you have to lose even when people are laughing Jesus can heal the unbelievable diseases which people say are impossible to heal we can see this by the action of a desperate lady and a woman having an issue of blood 12 years that means she had a menstrual period for 12 years which had spent all her money and living upon physicians neither could be healed of any came behind him and touched the border of his garment and immediately her issue of blood healed and Jesus said whom touch me when all denied Peter and they that were with him said master the multitude throng thee and press thee and say thou who touched thee this can be found in the book of Luke chapter 8 43 to 46 isn't it funny how all the people were touching Jesus and yet this one woman had the faith to receive a healing what were the other people doing were other people needing changes in their life yes but they was not bothered about Jesus they were just coming with the rest of the crowd this lady had faith to believe that just a small touch would heal her yet the multitude was touching Jesus and many felt nothing why is this so it's all about faith and what is the meaning of this word it is complete trust or confidence in someone or something this is why so many people don't receive their healing touch sometimes we need someone to come and just lay hands and pray for us it's the touch which helps us connect our faith to the healer Jesus Christ is any sick among you let him call for the elders of the church 
and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. This can be found in James chapter 5, verse 14. If you are sick, you can inbox me a prayer request and I'll be happy to pray for you. However, go to your pastor, ask your pastor to anoint you with oil and pray for your sickness. There are many ways we can receive a healing touch from Jesus. This can be a healing in the body, a sickness or fever, etc. There could be a healing in our mind and mental state or a healing in our spiritual life, being possessed by demons or having been involved in the black arts witchcraft. Jesus can heal all of these. If we just, pros if we just possess simple faith in his healing power, the power of God Almighty, I will now show you three healing touches in the Bible. Number one, sickness of body. Number two, sickness of the mind. And number three, sickness of the spirit. I'll show these not to preach to you, but to build up your faith by the words of God. Page number three, sickness of the body. And it came to pass when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. Luke chapter 5, verse 12 and 13. In this passage, we see a man with a very foul sickness, leprosy. Yet Jesus had no problem touching him. And with that touch, he was clean immediately. This can happen to you. And he came up to Bethsaida. And they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. And he looked the blind man, sorry, he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walk him. After that, he put his hand again upon his eyes and made him look up and he was restored and saw every man clearly. This is in the book of Mark chapter 8 verse 22 to 25. In this scene Jesus had to spit in the eyes to act activate his faith. Yet was it worth it? If you were blind would you let somebody spit in your eyes to get your eyesight back? Of course you would. So you can see again? Absolutely. And I'm sure most people would. Sickness of the mind. Jesus can heal any mental disorder and is able to do it by faith. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manners of sickness and all manners of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria and they besought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments and those who were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic, which is a mental disorder, and those that had palsy and he healed them all. This is Matthew chapter 4 verse 24. The word says he healed the lunatic, which is people with mental illness, and he can heal all who have faith in Jesus Christ today. You can receive a healing just by reading this track. If you believe with all your heart that there is power in the name of Jesus, he can heal your sickness, whatever it be, right at this moment. In the name of Jesus, heal me from my sickness in Jesus' name. Let's go to page number four sickness of the spirit then jesus went thence and departed into the coast of ty and sidon and behold a woman of canaan came out of the coasts and cried unto her saying have mercy on me o lord thou son of david my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil but he answered her not a word and his disciples came and besought him saying send her away for she crieth after us but he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meat, or it's not good, to take the word of God, the children's bread, and to cast it to devils. Because the word of God was for the Jews at that time, not the Gentiles. And she said, True, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, 
Great is thy faith. Be it unto thee as thou will. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. This can be found in the book of Matthew chapter 15 verse 21 to 28. This woman was not even a Jew. She was an outcast. You feel like her sometimes? Yet she had great faith. She wanted her daughter to be healed by hook or by crook. And she sure got it. And in the Psalms 51.10, it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew what? A right spirit in me. Sometimes we have a bad spirit. Sometimes we have a haunty spirit. We have an evil spirit. We have a wicked spirit. We need God to renew that spirit. We need to have the right spirit so God can bless us. Be submissive to the word of God. Submissive to your elders your pastors and ministers who are after you providing their following god and do the right thing there are many people walking around with demons and devils they don't even know they are under control by them that's why they feel heavy and dark clouds on them no peace in their life no joy just darkness yet jesus christ is ready to set you free like the boy he gave freedom to and when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed, for oftentimes he falleth into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me now. Page number five. And Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him and the child was cured from that very hour. Matthew 17 verse 14 to 18. Many people say that uh, was for 2000 years ago. It can't happen today. And that's why it will never happen to you today. Why? Faith in Jesus Christ. The book of Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if Jesus cast out devils yesterday, he can cast out devils today, and he will cast out devils forever. If Jesus healed the blind yesterday, he will heal the blind today, and he will heal the blind forever. Which means, what did he do 2,000 years ago? He can do today. Do you need to be healed today? Does a loved one in your life need a healing touch? Then you can do one or more of the following things. Number one, you yourself can lay hands on yourself and pray if you believe in Jesus Christ. And the Bible said, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them they shall lay hands on the sick which could be yourself and they shall recover this is mark chapter 16 verse 17 uh, and 16 sorry mark 16 16 17 and 18 so you can heal by laying your own hands on yourself. Number two, you can call me. Call me and I will pray over the phone for you and your loved ones in Jesus' name. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Matthew chapter 8, verse 7 and 8. You see, the centurion was not the one who was sick. It was his servant, but he came as a stand-in. He came uh, to pray for his servant. So if you've got a sick one, or you yourself are sick, or you know someone, you can call, and we can pray, and you can stand in proxy for that person. Number three, call and let's set up a meeting and pray for you in Jesus' name. Is any sick amongst you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's in James 5 verse 14. You can come and receive healing anytime in the name of Jesus. We're on page number six now. Salvation, healing of your soul. If your soul is looking to make peace with your creator, Jesus Christ, please follow the plan of salvation below and believe there is just one God in heaven. To the chief musician upon Mebek, Meshi, a psalm of David, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they, 
and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. Psalms 53 verse 1. If you do not believe in God, then how can God heal you? The first thing you have to do is believe in God. Number two, believe you are a sinner and you need to repent of your sin. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6.23 Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Repentance and baptism go hand in hand. You must believe and need to be baptized. Baptism is fulfilling your faith. You see, if you have faith, then works will follow your faith. So if you believe in Jesus and then argue about baptism, then truly you don't have faith. It says here, the like figure whereunto even baptism does also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 3.21 Then Peter said unto them, Repent! And be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Believe you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it must come with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Because if you don't speak in tongues, how do you know you've got the Holy Ghost? And if you would say, well, it's a feeling or the Lord spoke to me. Well, the Bible says... That the devil can portray himself as an angel of light. So to speak in tongues. Then you know you've been received the Holy Ghost. Now you may say. But how do I know the tongues are not from the devil? Because when you've received the Holy Ghost. And you've spoken in tongues. Then the Holy Ghost will lead you into all truth. And your life will begin to change. If you have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And your life hasn't changed. And you're still swearing. You're still cursing. You're still sinning. You're still doing mistakes. You still love sin. You love the world. You hate God. You hate the church. You hate the Bible. Then maybe you never truly received the Holy Ghost ghost in the beginning the bible says the holy ghost will lead you into all truth and then there will be fruits of the spirit fruits long suffering caring loving all of these things will follow a real believer who's been baptized with the holy ghost and when paul had laid hands upon them the holy ghost came on them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied that's in acts chapter 19 verse 6 when these people received the holy ghost their first thing they did was speak in tongues then they followed prophesying and they just got baptized they were new converts so god was already using them believe you need to fellowship in a spirit-filled church teaching the whole bible not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the day, as you see the day approaching. Hebrews 10.25, you cannot forsake fellowshipping. You must have fellowship with other believers. And it says in Hebrews 10.25, so much the more, as you see the day approaching. What is that day? The day of the Lord. As the day of the Lord is approaching, you better have fellowship with people, because if you're not fellowshipping with other saints, how can you prepare yourself for the day of the Lord? And then if you sit there and and say well I'm just going to stay in my room and I, that's pride that means you are not willing to submit yourself the Bible said submit yourself one to another going to church is a form of submission to one another and so you need to do that to prepare yourself and your faith for the coming of the Lord now since 1997 New Life Fellowship has maintained a presence in the community of London and more specifically in central London. We are the apostolics of the United Kingdom. This international arm of the UPC Church of GB&I Victoria strongly believes in spiritual development of its individual members, not only for the present time, but for the future, as some return to their homelands or travel to other nations. As a result, ministries have been established to help build and strengthen the church body. This includes, we are interested in doing teaching ministries like new converts class, discipleship class, children's ministry, prayer ministry, prayer and fasting days, praying for the surrounding community, prayer for the evangelism of the gospel in your town and country, pray uh, for outreach ministry, distributing of tracts, street meetings, online uh, uh, evangelism, 
and then missions supporting pioneering pastor program supporting evangelism and global crusades having crusades and don't forget bible school try to develop pastors and teachers and, and leaders uh if you need any information or help we may not be able to help you financially i'm not going to promise but we'll try to help you the best we can please inbox me or send us a message and uh, we'll try to do the best we can for you thank you so much all the details and my contact details will be on the last page of this booklet and you can find it at the end of this audio uh video Please remember, use this video, use this audio to teach people. This is a healing touch. Teach them that they themselves have the power to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. It is a promise from Jesus. My name is Pastor David Nurse, evangelist and pastor, and I am part of the Apostolics of the United Kingdom. God bless you. And God bless the United Kingdom. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.